the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes we get carried away with our images of God. And for many of us, it's all warm and cuddly in Grandma's kitchen with cold milk and warm cookies. And getting away with anything that we want because Grandma or God loves us and we are always forgiven. Let's be very clear that God is love and God is perfect forgiveness. But God, in that love, also chastises and rebukes, and it's always, not always, snugly grandma nice. In our first reading, Jeremiah struggles with his call as a prophet, a call that we share as baptized Christians. He reflects on his experiences in a voice that is both complaint and surrender. He says, you have duped me, and you were too strong, and you triumphed. The Hebrew word that is translated here as duped actually carries a meaning that's closer to seductive deception. And what we hear as too strong might be better translated as overpowered to the point of assault. So we might hear, Lord, I did not understand that you were seducing me, but you assaulted me and you triumphed. Jeremiah uses these strong images to describe his experience as a persecuted prophet. A prophet called to proclaim an unpopular message. He preaches violence and death and destruction at a time when the people are experiencing fat and comfortable and rosy. They didn't want to hear it. Actually, at the beginning of this chapter that we heard the excerpt from, Jeremiah is actually physically assaulted when an enraged priest punches him in the face. And he ends up spending a day in the public stocks, being mocked and spit upon. So it's really no wonder that he vows not to mention God or to speak his name. But he is internally assaulted and overpowered. The word burns in his heart and he cannot hold it in. He must speak. He 
even an unpopular message that he doesn't want to hear. It is this image of burning fire in the heart of Jeremiah that correlates to the psalm we heard this morning. The picture of a parched soul being watered and fed by God. A thirsting and hungry heart satisfied by a rich banquet. A weariness that is soothed and sheltered in God's hand. Jeremiah was warning the comfortable people to be aware of complacency, rejecting God's law in his time. Just as Paul warns the church in Rome hundreds of years later, Paul says, Do not conform yourself to this age, but renew your mind, discern the will of God. Maybe better said is, do not let the pleasures and comforts of our society blind you to the will of God. Which brings us to Peter. Poor Peter. He's at once blessed and derided. He's enlightened and blind. One moment he's fully connected, as we heard last week, when Peter declares, Jesus, you are the Messiah. And Jesus responds, blessed are you, Peter. This was not revealed to you through human understanding. Peter gets this through divine revelation. But today, just a couple of verses later in that same gospel, Peter succumbs to the age to the common ideas of what a Messiah should be. He ignores the true message spoken to his heart. He fails to discern God's message. And in response, Jesus brands him as Satan. You see, he got only half the message. Thinking as humans do, he misconstrued the real meaning of the Messiah. It's hard to be a prophet. It's difficult to speak the truth that God revealed in our hearts. Fire sometimes seems ready to consume us, but only by embracing and entering into that fire can we find the life-giving water and the nourishing banquet that is God. It is the great spiritual paradox by dying to self, we are renewed. By surrendering, we are free. It's not an easy path, and we often stumble, just as Paul stumbled, just as Peter stumbled, just as many saints before have stumbled, and many that to come will stumble. But what your soul and heart are thirsting for not the things of this age, because things cannot satisfy. So, if you're not completely satisfied, if your heart is unsettled and yearning for something that seems just out of reach, maybe it's time to take a step back from the things of this life things of this age. Maybe it's time to put aside some of the human pursuits and spend some quality time in prayer and try to discern the whole message that God has for you. And if you've done it before, do it again. Because God might have a new and different message for you. Because if you die to yourself in this age, you become a new and different person with a new and different message from God. I don't know what God will ask of any of you. I struggle with what he asks of me. But as you spend time in prayer and discernment this week, try to get the whole thing. 